Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, let's take a look at how you can contribute a project, a guided project on CodeDAM, which will help a lot of developers learn to code properly. So I'm going to first of all show you by the end of this video, what you can actually create as a guided project. And then we're going to be taking a look at setting up a proper guided project. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of course and helps the channel grow. So first things first, I'm going to go to codedam.com slash projects and I'm going to filter down these by guided, right? Or you can just directly go to one of the projects which is already guided. So I can start with this multiverse HTML5 photo gallery project. And if I, let me just go ahead and actually take a look at some other one because that was already completed. So if I take a look at this and I reset this project, you're going to see, I'm going to see a page like this, which says a start guided project. This is what an end user, someone who's trying to learn coding will see, right? Once they start a guided project, they're gonna see a section on the right, which shows creating elements and tags, adding background image. So these are all steps, right? All the steps which the user has to complete. Every single step comes with a bunch of challenges, which they can complete. An IDE, an editor within code dam, an output window if it's a front end challenge and an instruction tabs telling them what to do. So let's take a look at how you can create a guided project like this and help your fellow developers, help the other people build a project in a step-by-step -step fashion. Okay, so step number one is to fork this repository because you can't make edits to this code dam projects repo directly. Just fork it under your own account. You can name it projects code dam or whatever you want and create a fork. The second step is to clone this repository. So it will be code and then you copy this SSH link or HTTPS link, whatever you want to do. Open your terminal and paste this link. Open your terminal and paste, or you know, just write git clone and then paste the link. You will be, you will see that it gets cloned into a project named projects code dam. Just open this in VS code. Now, before we start building our own project, let's take a look at how a project is laid down. So let's say we want to take a look at how multiverse project was laid down. So I would open this folder. Again, this is a guided project and I'm going to open this folder and I will check the spec.yaml file. So a project on code dam consists of two main things. The first thing is all the instructions and the challenges part. And the second thing is the initial starter boilerplate. So the advantage of a guided project like this is that if I do something like this over here, and if I submit the step, eventually like marking all these challenges as complete, then my code will also be retained in the next step, right? So I will start with new set of instructions with new things to follow, but with the same code, which I wrote in the last step. So this is important. And this is one of the features of what guided projects help you do. Okay. So over here, you can see that I have opened a spec.yaml file for an existing project and it consists of these two sections. The first section is obviously the main thing of the project. And then there's a second section of code dam. So we'll get into both of these things. Let's try to set up our own project first, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder over here. And I'm going to say simple hello world project. And this is of course a dummy project. It will not be included in the main website, but what I'm trying to tell you is that that is how you create a project. That's what we're going to do. All right. So you can see that all these projects have a name with separated by dashes. The good thing about this is let's say if this name is multiverse HTML5 photo gallery. The place where it will be accessible once it's merged into master is codedown.com slash project slash the same folder name, which was there, right? So we don't have to worry about what or where this project would be located. It will be the having the same folder name. That means that it has to be a proper URL safe folder name, right? That is why it's best to have lowercase dashes in the folder without spaces. That's it. All right. So first things first, we're going to be going to going and create a spec.yaml file just like we used to. I'm just going to copy paste it from some existing interactive. Oh, this was not an interactive project. So I'm going to copy a spec.yaml file from a guided project. There you go. And here we can start missing or, you know, just adding our own details over top of existing ones. I'm going to say simple hello world project in HTML right? We can give it a tag of HTML CSS. That's it. Now here's where the interesting part lies. So startup files is a repository, again, a GitHub repository for boilerplate code. This is something which you also have to make sure that it's on point because this would be something which the users like this. If they go to their own file system, you can see they have CDMRC, they have readme, they have style guide, they have everything. So you can in wish to include this as a starting point for every single user. So in order to set this up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and fork the github.com slash codedam slash classrooms. I'm going to 
Go down classrooms repo. I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna search for HTML playground starter template, right? This is also one of the templates which the which the code damn playground uses, and this is what I recommend as a starter template for you. If you are creating HTML, CSS, and JavaScript projects, if you are creating React projects, then I would recommend another repository as a starting repository on which you can build on top of. The advantage of this repository is that it comes with a CDMRC configuration built in, right? And the best way to start your servers as well. So what we can do for now is we can just go back I can just go back a directory and I can just say I can just fork this repository as well and I can just say this is my simple hello world guided project starter that's it and we just fork this particular repository we clone this particular repository using SSH again I can just say git clone and this URL and I can just open this another VS code instance. So what we can do here is let's say here I can instead of including all of this I can say hello world like this something like this okay script.js can be removed we don't want script.js and we also don't want style.js right now. Inside our CDMRC we can just keep the tabs as index.html and if you want to understand more on how to customize the CDMRC this is an important configuration file which which basically tells how your playground behaves. I would highly recommend you to go forward and read this guide on teach.codedam.com, the CDMRC guide. The CDMRC has a very detailed documentation on teach.codedam.com slash CDMRC. This link will be in the description, so you don't have to worry about that. But what this helps us to do is it helps us to add a lot of features or a lot of default configurations to the playground. So you see, when I loaded this project, these two tabs, this one tab automatically opened. It's open because the CDMRC is configured to open index.html by default. All right, so once we have cloned our starter repository, once we have made it ready, what I can do is I can just say, get commit m starter files ready, and I can just push it, right? What you have to do is make sure that this repository is now, if you refresh this, this repository, you have to make sure you copy this link and paste it into your older starter file spec.yaml file. See, so now you're creating a simple hello world project in HTML and you, you have specified the starter files as this. So whenever somebody starts this project, they would automatically get this repo as cloned in, in their code damn IDE. Its type is front end, its level would be easy. This cover image is something which you can add. I mean, it depends on whatever image you want to do, which you want to specify. This cover image basically is the image which appears here. So this is the cover image of a project. It could be the project itself. It can be hosted anywhere you want in any single branch or any other different branch. So that's it. We can keep the cover image the same thing for this for example or you can change it to whatever you want a short description would be this description is the description which appears over here so you can see a photo gallery website with pop-up photo functionality this is what is appearing on the code dam ide uh, the code dam website so you can say something like building website with all h heading tags saying hello world right just like that long description is the description which appears down here in the project description section so you can customize this as well all right so you can see i've also specified a long description as well alongside this i'm gonna also specify some details about this code damn section right so i'm gonna say helper learning path is front end that's okay i mean this depends on this can take either front end back end full stack web3 these values but when you create a pull request on this repository i or someone from the team will help you decide what this section should be exactly so one of the important things is that this guided has to be true here, right? If this is false or if this is not present, then it will not boot in a guided mode. Rest of the things you can keep the same, right? It could be HTML, it could be terminal editor browser, it could be show community ban, it could be true, it could be front end, that's completely fine. And that is it. That is how you prepare a basic spec.yaml file for your project. Now the second step is because this is a guided project, we also have to add a bunch of steps. Right. So the way this works is you have to start with step zero, just like you see over here. And each single step folder has to consist of two files, challenges.yaml and instructions.md. So if I go ahead and copy this, for example, and if I go to step zero, paste this, that's it. And if I copy, let's say instructions, and if I copy instructions.md, what goes inside instructions.md is visible over here in this instructions tab, right? And what goes inside this challenges.yaml is just a configuration on how the challenges should be organized. You see, getting started first step has just a step ID and name. 
What we can also do is if we try to take a look at step one of this, we can include this block of step breakdown, right? So now the step breakdown includes all the challenges which you can add. So you can say you must have h1 tag on screen and you can have a text which is you must have hello world inside that h1 tag right something like this so you see your see your step zero is ready and this could be like you know just include an h1 tag and that's it so this area this particular area is the is an important area because here is the instructions area where you can specify what exactly needs to be done this is a markdown file so you can follow a markdown syntax you can include code blocks you can include anything and everything you want and this would be visible to the end user right super important area to lay down the instructions for your this particular step let's create another step for this one i'm gonna have a step one for example i'm gonna copy this challenges.yaml file this would turn into step one the name would be let's say adding adding h2 tag now the challenges could be same i just replaced it with h2 instead and a third one could be h1 tag should still exist let's say something like this right similarly i would also add an instructions.md over here i'm gonna paste this this would be h2 make sure that h1 is also included right so let's say we just want to keep it to just two steps you can obviously break it down into any number of steps you want you can have 10 steps 15 steps depends on how guided you want to make it usually 5 to 10 to 15 steps is great amount of number of steps uh, you don't want to keep just a couple of steps like I have because this doesn't make it a guided project at all. But you also don't want to keep 100 steps because that will be too much. Okay, so once you have created your project, you're going to see all of this appears in green in VS Code because all of these files are ready to be staged or ready to be merged. So I'm just going to go back to the repository. I'm going to say git add, git commit, adding a dummy project for codedam video and get push origin master right so i just pushed it to projects branch to my branch this is not on code dam yet so you can see if i go and let's see if i go back to mehol mpt slash projects code dam you're gonna see that we have a new commit this branch is one commit ahead of master so what i'm gonna do next is i'm gonna go ahead and click on contribute and i'm gonna click on open pull request what this will do is it will open a pull request from my repository to the codedam projects now remember that this project would work on codedam.com only if it is merged inside of the main repository right if it is not merged inside main repository you won't be able to browse the ui or anything so you just leave it like this you create a pull request and what you do is wait because now a maintainer like me or someone from the team will review your pull request in this case because obviously i want to show you how the end result would look like i'm just going to go ahead and merge this without any reviewer in the, that case is me i'm just going to squash and merge this pull request you can see this project is merged simple hello world project it's on the master branch now in order to access this what you have to do is go to codedam.com slash project slash enter this particular slug and the moment you enter the slug and hit enter you're gonna see your project being loaded you can see that we use the same cover image so that is okay but you see everything else is directly picked from what you specified what we specified in this particular yaml file right in the spec.yaml file now the interesting part is that you can see your project description and everything is there the instruct interesting part is once you click on the start guided project you're gonna see that you have your two steps which you added awesome right because this is how it would start it would start with the file structure which you specified in this case this is the one which we specified this is the cdmrc which we specified right i would highly recommend you to learn about cdmrc as well before proceeding to set up a project you have the instructions inside of this instructions tab and you have these steps right the step is obviously locked because i have not completed the first one so what i can do is i can go ahead and let's say if i start working on this is an awesome 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 project right so we already have hello world in boilerplate so i can just remove this exclamation as well so you see we have an h1 tag on the screen and we also have hello world that's it i mark these challenges as complete and i click on the summit step button once i do that you're gonna see i move to the next step which involves a different set of instructions to follow but it comes with the same code base so this is an important thing because now i'm resuming my project resuming my work from the last step so i can just do 
hello world again something like this right so this is powerful why because you have you can break down any project whether that's a python project whether that's a react project whether that's a view project it's an html project it's a rust project it's it could be anything it could be like setting up a payments gateway with stripe or setting up some payments infrastructure with razor pay which is broken down into multiple steps people can browse it people can learn from a step-by-step -step fashion and that's it that's all you need in order to make this work yeah that's pretty much it how you can contribute an actual functional working project a working guided project on codedam we will obviously make a lot more changes in terms of how the user experiences it but the fundamentals should remain the same how you contribute a project on codedam a guided project and this is a great initiative to also blog or document about your projects because these guided projects would be linked to you that you contributed them you can also use them as a pride thing that hey you contributed a project people usually write blogs and they are proud of that why not just create a project for people to actually learn hands-on like a project probably would help a ton of more people in a much more impactful way compared to just a simple blog about your project right so this is it how you contribute a project that is all for this video hopefully you make the best use of it i'm gonna see you in the next one really soon if you're still watching this video, make sure you comment down in the comment section. I watched this video till the end. Also, if you're not part of CodeDamp's Discord community, you're missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code. You already know the drill. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much for watching.